the scars that's on my body, every scar that's on my body got a story. But none of these scars are who I am. And what's even more interesting about that is the scars that's on my body and the stories that come with it, none of them, none of them are more than the scars that's inside me. There are a multitude of scars inside me. There are less than a hundred even on my body, but there are a multitude inside me. And if I can learn to overcome these, that should be a training ground to overcome these. I thought it was a platform to build business mind with business minded community. That is not even a footnote of what this program represents. This program represents legitimate first opportunities. I, like all of you here, went up and down on a roller coaster, which we call the system. Juvenile hall, camp, youth authority, and eventually prison. I was released from prison. 37 days later, I found myself back in prison doing 20 years of my life. I paroled May 17, 2018 from this facility, rebuild. That's what programs like this is here to do. People that lived and struggled, been through it, rise out of it and come to help you. And you know, through our experiences, help people grow from it. This is not the first time I've been back in the prison talking to the inmates, but it is the first time that I have been back to Pelican Bay since I was released from In Hustle 2.0, they have an exercise writing out a life map. And in my life map, I identified trouble areas and sweet areas. The first time I was ever arrested, I was four years old. My mother and uh, my aunt were arrested for uh, shoplifting. So I was in the car, so they took me to. Well, I was just a kid, so they just put me in the cell. Until, By himself, away from his mother. Until my grandmother came and got me. And then I was sent to live with my grandmother until they came and got me back. I was sent to boys' home at age 11. I escaped. Since I was like 11 years old, I've just been in and out of jail systems, you know, camps, placements. I've been through everything. Up to about 11 years old, I was a good kid. And I hit middle school. And the desire to be the cool guy kind of took over. I uh, started getting in fights in school and I started realizing all the guys that I was fighting happened to be from a certain gang. I was 11 years old. And I had a family member of mine coming down from L.A. and he's a crip, he's a gang member. This guy in the neighborhood, he was a blood. So they got into it. I wasn't a crip, I wasn't a blood. But me and my brother was riding our beach cruiser and I'm on the handlebars and he's pedaling and we're riding. And as we're coming down the street, this blood gang member jumped out from behind a truck and swung with all his might and hit me in my chest and hit me dead in my solar plex, knocked all the wind out of me. I'm on the ground spitting up, coughing, I can't breathe. My brother's two years younger than me. He starts crying. He gets on the bike, rides back home to the house, go in my mother's room, find my father's gun and comes back. But when I seen my brother with the gun, I felt a bit of courage. And I jumped up, grabbed the gun from my brother and just started shooting. I just started shooting his, I don't even know how many times the gun went off, but I know one of them hit him in his back, like over his shoulder. And when the guy fell on the ground, seeing him laying there shaking, I'm sorry, man, leave me alone. I'm talking about my head, my courage, my power, my sense of power. It just, it illuminated my whole body. And I was like, that's what I'm gonna do from now on. Nobody from that day, Nobody is ever gonna take from me, steal from me, hurt me in any type of way, and I kept my promise. What really struck me was this just, many times we just see the end result, which is, okay, they're incarcerated, but we know what got them there. And some started really difficult circumstances at extremely young ages, and 
you know, sometimes we kind of don't think about those early years. We think more about how they acted out. Like at the end of the day, connecting at that level and seeing the hope that they have and stepping into their fear because many hadn't had that level of engagement or touch or connection. A lot of these men, especially for me, I'm someone who has been a victim to sexual assault and rape at gunpoint. So walking into a maximum security prison to most people would be very scary. And for me, it just continues to obliterate all the stereotypes I have around men that look a certain way, men that have a certain past, and it allows me to connect heart to heart and really see them for who they are and to have them see me for who I am. Really what you see when you go into the space is the innocence. And you would think that's a strange place to see innocence inside of a maximum security prison because you see the boy that grew up in and out of foster care. You see the boy that watched a parent get murdered, that you see a boy that was taken with his parent to his very first crime. And you ask yourself, what chance did they actually stand? When you draw up your life maps, pay attention to the detail of your life maps. That is your path to self-discovery. That is the key points that you examine in your life and find out whatever scar you had when you were nine years old, you didn't have it when you were 17 and you don't have it now. In my map, I had beautiful and blessed areas throughout my life but they all came back to one trigger. When I was seven years old, we lived in Los Angeles County for about a year, year and a half. And while I was there, an older family member of mine raped me. And when that happened, my parents didn't know, uh, no other family member knew, just me and him. But in my mind, they were all guilty of not protecting me, not loving me, not being everything that they claim they are in my life. And every time my mother didn't come to a basketball game, my father didn't pick me up from school on time, it validated that tape plan in my head. I don't matter. I am a victim. So me taking back my power was that feeling that I had at 11 years old when I, when I shot that man. And my life became that expression. Take your power. Don't wait till it's given. What I discovered about life is you give yourself the power. You don't need a circumstance or a situation to give you the power. You give it to you because it's already there. When they are given the opportunity to look into the eyes of another human being who are going through similar struggles. But this human being, they look at as this person is successful. This person is succeeding. It makes them redefine what that success is. I'm a natural born hustler. That's true, you step into the line. Now if a statement feels really true for you, you can wave your hand to silently in the air. That means it's really true for me. I've been self-employed or have started my own business. Whether it was legal or illegal. <laughs> there you go. The thing that makes that program in a class by itself for individuals coming from the former lifestyle is that they have been isolated from the connection. They have been completely cut off from that type of connection, that type of empathy. They have been disconnected. I can feel myself judging myself right now in this exercise. And when it's brought back into their presence, whether it's the words, whether it's the glance, or just a kind gesturing hand, you see the hardest guy break down and melt. Nearly every night, one of my parents tucked me into bed and told me I was loved. Because he's been wanting that all life. He's been wanting from his mother, his auntie, his wife, his daughter's mother. He's been wanting that and not getting it. By the 
the age of 18, I learned that it's better to keep my mouth shut and keep my feelings to myself. And here comes this stranger sitting up here saying, I understand. At one point or another, I have thought about ending my life. I'm going through this and I haven't, I haven't really addressed it. I have not had a visit in about six months. They don't have any idea what is going on inside you, but in your mind, it's like, oh, them eyes is looking through me right now. I've needed the connection that I'm feeling in this room today. If I had a guardian angel, she would want me to have the peace that comes from forgiveness. I have confidence that my future will be better than my past. And I will never forget this moment when I was standing across from a man who was in prison for um, being convicted of murder. And we had this moment, we were looking into each other's eyes and, and we realized that you know, there was this part of the, of the exercise where we both got to realize the importance of forgiveness, of self-forgiveness, and, and not being defined by our past. And realizing that there are things that I've done in my, in my life that I'm not proud of. And to be in the, the daily practice of self-forgiveness is my freedom. We all make mistakes. We all got scars. The thing is, these scars, these mistakes don't have to define who you are. They're really, merely testaments of what you've been through, testaments of what you've overcome. Look at them like life's lessons, the building blocks of wisdom, character, and strength. And here, it's the content of your character that speaks to the person you are. And with us, that's all that matters. You are incredible, and you have so much to give back to everybody in this room, and you got to believe it in yourself. I can believe it in you until I'm blue in the face, but you got to believe it in yourself. Take that, build your passion around that. Build your company, build your family, build your career around that. Amen. And take that to the street. Take it with you.